Good afternoon, everybody. It's 454 here in Florida. God bless each and every one of you. And I just want to come on and answer some questions. Um, well, a couple of questions here. Uh, we'll go to the first one. Oh, if you guys hear a humming, that's my air conditioner. I'm sorry about that. Just Please just try to ignore it and, and just you know, do the best you can to listen to the message, okay? All right, so here we go. This is from Richie of Rapture Lights. Okay, God bless you, brother. Glad to see you. And he says, Sherry, may I ask a question, please? Is it okay to wear gold cross on a gold chain? The reason I ask is obvious, and it is also why it's on this particular channel. Many thanks and love always. I love you too, brother. God bless you. Um, well, Richie, uh, you know, we've talked about these channels, <laughs> and I'm not reprimanding you, brother, but um, the last time you came to me, you were in fear of a few different things that was being taught, and uh, if the foundation is not Jesus Christ, and if the foundation is not love, and if the foundation is not um, grace, Get away from them. They're teaching you law. La 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 la. And if they're saying that you're not going into rapture if you got a sin, and if they're saying that uh, you're going to hell if you got sin, and if they're saying that, um, well, if, if they're saying anything like that, get away from them. They don't even they don't understand what they're saying. They're not rightly dividing the word. So anyway, so let's get into this. Um, Tried to not make my videos too long. Okay, so we're going to go to Exodus 24, and we are going to read it in context. And let's see what this means, because I'll bet this is what they're talking about. And it says, And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which hath brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Out of the house of bondage, thou shalt have no other gods before me. I'll say it again. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. And then it says, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. So what are they talking about here? What's, what's the scripture talking about? It's talking about idolatry. It's talking about you're worshiping something. So if we were to look at this scripture and take it out of context, well, you can look at it like thou shalt not make it unto thee a graven image of any likeness of anything in heaven, earth, and under the water. Uh, uh, in the water under the earth. Hmm. So you can't make no images of anything in heaven. You can't make any Im images of anything on the earth. And you can't make any images on anything under the earth. In the water. That's in the water. So you can't have a ceramic dolphin in your house. Really? It says anything. Anything in heaven. Anything on earth. Anything in the water under the earth. No graven images. No images. Nothing. Zero. Zilch. You can't have a picture of a palm tree. You can't have um, an angel in your house. Like a little, I have a glass angel here. You can't have, um, you can't have Mother Mary in your house holding the baby Jesus. You can't, that, that's nonsense. That's nonsense. Unless you're a Catholic and I'm not putting anything down with the Catholicism. God bless them. There's a lot of Catholics that believe in Jesus in the right way. Um, that are not working their way to heaven. That they are solely uh, blessed in believing that it is through faith. Alone in Christ. And that he is the only mediator between God and man. For it says in the Bible, you know, it says, uh, I am the way, 
Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes into the Father except through Him. He is our mediator. He is our advocate. Uh, he is our go-between. He is the bridge between God and man through our confession of faith in Christ. Now, if you're worshiping Mary, and you're bowing down to Mary, and you're glorifying her, well, then that's wrong. You're not supposed to be glorifying Mary. You're not supposed to be glorifying angels. So let's, let's look at the word idolatry, because that's what this is talking about. Let's look at the uh, definition here of idolatry. Adulation, adoration, reverence, veneration, or glorification. Extreme admiration, love, or reverence for something or someone. So you're not supposed to be glorifying anyone but God. So, again, anything that you have in your house that you're bowing down to, like Buddha, no. Anything like that, any other God that you're bowing down to, you're praying to, you're glorifying, you're, you're just like, oh, this is the way I get to God. No. Or it is a God. No. That's idolatry. But if you have a cross, I have many crosses in my house. I have a couple of glass angels. Um, a couple, well, I have a glass angel and a gold angel. Uh, and am I going to pray to them? No. Uh, would I wear a gold cross with a gold chain? Yeah, I have before. Am I praying to that cross? No. Am I glorifying that cross? No, I'm not. I glorify who it represents, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. So, honey, if you want to wear that cross that you have, if you have a cross, a gold cross with a gold chain, as a matter of fact, you know, um, if you want to put yourself back under the law, the mitzvot, uh, you know, you're not supposed to be wearing gold, but I'm not going to get into all this, but <laughs> we're not under the law anymore. We're under grace. We're under a new dispensation. You're not supposed to be having pierced ears. You're not supposed to be wearing two threads, different threads, intertwined. Yeah. You're wearing polyester and cotton. Uh-oh. It's against the law. I mean, if, if you want to follow the law, if you don't want to be under grace, if you want to be under the Old Testament law, then um, you better give up them, them juicy, fat hamburgers with cheese. Hmm. Because anything with blood or fat in it, you're not supposed to be eating. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Nope. So, if you're wearing pants as a woman... You're not supposed to be doing that. It's a law. Uh-uh. You're not supposed to be doing that. You, you need to go put a dress on because in today's culture, you know, that's in uh, apparel for a man. It says in the Bible, a man does not wear what a woman wears and a woman does not wear what a man wears. But that's the law. And I'm paraphrasing, but that's the law. So if you want to put yourself back under the law, uh, then, yeah, don't be having any pierced ears. You're not supposed to have any pierced ears. You're not supposed to have any tattoos. You better erase all those tattoos off of you. It's against the law. And if you transgress one part of the law, you've transgressed the whole law. Uh-oh, it's too late. You've already transgressed the whole law. So guess who you need? You need Jesus. You need his righteousness that's been imputed to you through your confession of faith and the circumcision of your heart <laughs> through the Holy Spirit, the agape love. You will know them by the fruit that they bear. And I don't mean to be flippy, but we've got to learn this, that we're not under the law anymore. We do things every single day that we don't realize that we're doing that is against the law. And they say, oh no, but it's just the Ten Commandments. Oh no, it's not. 
<laughs> oh, no, 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 no. I, I, I challenge all y'all, anyone that says it's not uh, the Book of Moshi, and there was only one book back then, okay, the Book of Moshi, the law, the Torah, the teaching, okay, go look at Luke 24:44 and see what it says. It's talking about the Book of Moshi and the prophets and the Psalms, that he had to fulfill every bit of it, and that's what he did. That means the whole law, that, that's the 613 of the Torah, also known as the teaching, not just the Ten Commandments. Uh uh. And like I said before, you better get yourself a temple with some sacrifices. You need a whole bunch of those. A bunch of animals, different kinds, for different sacrifices. Daily, weekly, monthly, and yearly sacrifices for your sins. But see, amen and amen and amen, we have the Lord Jesus Christ. Hebrews 10.10, 10, he was sacrificed, the perfect Lamb of God, once, one time, for all. All sin was put on the cross in the flesh. Past, present, and future, all of it. One time, for all that would put their faith in Jesus that fulfilled every letter of the law for us in our simple flesh. And through our confession in Him, His righteousness has been imputed to us in the spirit man, in the heart. You see, we have a communion with the Holy Spirit that comes and dwells in us. And we are sealed to the day of redemption until He comes back and He, he redeems what He has paid for with His blood. His redeeming blood. His perfect human blood that was not touched by male or female. In other words, it takes the blood of the male to go into the ovum, the egg. It's not the female. The female, her blood never goes into the baby unless there's a problem and the placenta is broken and this and that um, during birth and things like that. But other than that, None of her blood, none of her the nutrients and the minerals and uh, things of that nature go into the baby which produces the blood. And that's what happened to the Lord Jesus Christ because he was overshadowed by the Holy Spirit. There was no male involved, no man, no fleshy man. And her blood didn't get in there. So through one man, Adam, sin entered into the world and it was through the blood bloodline. As I said before, it's not just hovering over us in the world. No. It's in our bloodline. Even David said, I was conceived in sin. Conceived in sin. He was born in sin. We all are. For all the sin and false short of the glory of God. But his blood was not tainted. His blood was pure. And uh, that's what, you know, this is scientific, you guys. And biology. And, and that's what makes him a perfect man. His blood was perfect when he got here. And his blood stayed perfect because he fulfilled every letter of the law for us as a Hebrew. They had to or they would be accursed. What does that mean? Put to death. For the wages of sin is death, but death could not hold him because he had no sin. That's why he could rise from the dead. He was justified through the Father God. And you are justified and made righteous through him. For what he did for you in your sinful flesh by putting all sin on the cross. And shedding his blood for you. For it says in Leviticus 17.11, For the life of the flesh is in the blood. And I have given it to you to put upon the altar to atone for your sins. So he was a one-time sacrifice once for all. Okay, so I'm going to uh, say to you, brother, 
God bless you. Wear your cross if you want to. Unless you're worshiping it and saying you're worshiping the cross. Then, then well, no, you shouldn't be doing that. But I don't think that's what you have in mind. Okay. Um, so, no, this has been taken out of context, sweetheart. Yes, you can wear the uh, gold cross with the gold chain. And, uh, you know, you can have a dolphin in your house. And you can have a bear statue in your house. And you can have pictures of your family in your house, images. You can have... You see what I'm saying, you guys, okay? We're not worshiping this stuff. Now, we might love our family, but we're not worshiping them. We're not, we're not putting them as gods. You see what I'm saying? All right, so um, we took care of that. Let's go on to the next question real quick. I'm going to make it very, very quick. All right, so, okay. Hmm. I hope that was helpful to you, brother. Uh, I hope uh, I hope you stay on some channels that are not uh, putting out bad doctrine. I want you to understand the grace of God, honey. All right. So, um, first love. God bless you, sweetheart. She says, "Why is there uh, such a struggle between all these doctrines out there?" Well. The, the, the problem is, is, number one, they don't read their Bible. Number two, they don't uh, divide the word correctly, all the books. Number three, they don't interpret scripture, scripture correctly. Uh, number four, they're bringing in other books that um, are heretical and blasphemous to the word of God that was completed and anoint, by anointed and appointed men of the Lord God, which... Uh, as the Spirit breathed upon them, they wrote. And that is our completed King James. Okay. Um, completed King James. We're not in need of anything else. The word uh, line upon line, precept upon precept, in the Spirit backs up the word. Okay. So I'll put it that way. Um, all right. Uh, let's see what else. They've been taught bad doctrine. They're not saved. They don't dwell the Holy Spirit. They're not receiving uh, the Spirit uh, of the Word from the Holy Spirit, because like I said, they're not dwelled with it, with Him. Um, well, because their carnal mind are going into fables. They've been taught bad doctrine. They've been raised in bad doctrine. No two brains are alike. Um, where somebody might receive a scripture in one way, someone else might receive it in another. Um, it's appealing to their flesh, um, the pride of the flesh. Uh, th th there's all kinds of reasons, sweetheart. Okay, and then she's talking about that she has um, been plagued with self condemnation and the spirit of condemnation and guilt and shame ever since I was born of his spirit eight years ago. Well, it sounds like you're you're going through you're going through transformation, honey. Okay. Be you not conformed to this world, but be you transformed into the renewing of your spirit. And see what's going on here is you have the mind of the flesh and the mind of the spirit and they are continually at war war and they are contrary to one another and the Holy Spirit himself will make war with the flesh uh, in order to transform you. Uh, there may be, you know, I don't know you, sweetheart. I don't know your heart issues, meaning, um, you know, I don't know the things that are bothering you within your, within your spirit. And... Um, I don't know how transformed you are into understanding the gospel of grace that has a lot to do with your peace. Uh, but we, we are continually at war as Christians because the Holy Spirit will go to war and come against the flesh. Uh, and then the flesh will come against the spirit. And, you know, that guilt and shame and condemnation 
we're not supposed to be having that condemnation and you may be having some problems receiving that you are now in peace because of the Lord Jesus Christ and you are no longer under the law and you don't need to pay attention to that flesh that's saying this or that and that to you okay that you shouldn't be doing this or this that and this. if you're walking in love with God and with yourself and with man and I mean in a healthy way with yourself meaning you know you're not doing drugs and this and that and the other that's going to hurt you um, you know then if you're walking in love with God and with man you're fine honey because it says that you know you'll know them by the fruit that they bear not how perfect they are and you've been made at peace with God through your confession of faith in Jesus Christ so when you get these condemning thoughts and guilt ignore them ignore them now if you feel some kind of conviction of something you said or thought or this and you would say Lord Jesus please forgive me I'm sorry in Jesus name I pray amen you want to say that go ahead say it you know but all sin has already been put on the cross past present and future the minute you confess Jesus Christ as your excuse me as your Savior all your sin honey was put on the cross past present and future all of it is there and you have now been deemed righteous by his righteousness that has been imputed to you through your confession of faith and what he did not what you do so I think that you're going to spiritual warfare um, and you will get more peace and more joy uh, when you totally and thoroughly understand the gospel of grace that is when you'll come into more of your peace and your joy honey um, and that you'll be able to rest in Christ because that's what he wants from us he says my yoke is light rest in me you know that's what it says in scripture so the minute you realize that um, well it takes time honey to understand for some people it can take a long time to understand in, in completeness of grace grace um, so I pray you stay on the channel and the more you hear the more you meditate on the word the more you understand um, the foundation is Jesus Christ and his grace uh, that was given to the Gentile and to the whole world whoever will receive him for what he did for us um, and you know this condemnation spirit that you got going on ignore it ignore it it'll go away and not only that you're going to spiritual warfare God is pruning you he's teaching you things that he would like for you to do and things that he don't want you to do perhaps um, so that's the best I can give you on that sweetheart because I uh, um, like I said, I don't know you, and I don't know what you're in condemnation about, uh, or how far along you are in understanding grace. But um, anyways, God bless both of you, um, Richie and First Love. I love you guys. I hope this was helpful to you. Um, just do the best you can, sweetheart, in learning about His grace. Stay on this channel. Amanda's uh, King, uh, uh, Love by the King, Colleen's. Um, stay washed daily by the word and the more you can stay in the word the more you might go through some warfare learning things um, it, it's, a pro it's a part of the process but anyways God bless you you guys have a great day amen and amen